Okay, team. So right now we're going to do our first scenario. It's involving rhyming text and it's involving reading books like uh, like Good Night Moon. I'm sure you've you've read Good Night Moon uh, to your students or to your kids. Or, or this is another favorite one of mine, Jan Berry. And I want you to connect this idea, this this activity of reading a rhyming text to your students as a way of developing early phonological awareness. Like, for example, in uh, in Jan Berry here in this text, it says one of the pages says ramble and rum. OK, rumble and ramble and blackberry bramble billions of berries for blackberry bramble jamble. You could hear the alliteration and rhyming going on. And a child, even as early as an infant, is able to start to hear similarities in those words. So they're hearing those similarities in the words, like this sentence right here from Goodnight Moon. They're hearing clocks and socks, and they're hearing there's a similar vowel and N sound. And so we have that rhyme, that, that re repetition of the similar sounds at the end of a word. So this is a way to read to a very young child, even an infant, able to hear they're able to start to develop that basic phonological awareness and this type of activity this would go through you know uh, a toddler in preschool they would be developing phonological awareness just by reading a rhyming text okay so that's our scenario and i want you to make that connection rhyming text early phonological uh, awareness development now let's read our first question associated with this okay i'm gonna i'm gonna set some ground rules for this right here I want you to, I'm going to put a number on every question that I do on the top. I'm going to give you a number. That number represents how long I think it should take you to read the question. So I'll put this one here. This is going to be, uh, this is actually, this is going to be one minute. Now it might take you only 30 seconds to read it. That's fine. But when I say go, I want you to read it in one minute. Okay. All right. All right. Are you ready? On your mark, get set, pause me, uh, pause me and read it to yourself. I, you know what I might do? You can pause me, but I'm actually going to read it once um, out loud. And then uh, and then you can pause and listen to it. But I'm just going to read out loud. This isn't a hard one. This is fairly simple. And you can pause me and fast forward this if you want to. But it says here, always take a minute. That's our target. Read it to yourself. It says here, four, the use of rhyming text for kindergarten read allows is likely to promote the reading development of kindergarten students prim primarily by A, fostering their phonological awareness, B, increasing their vocabulary knowledge, C, enhancing their understanding of story elements, D, improving their letter recognition skills. Okay, now read it to yourself, please, go. Unpause the video and let's talk about it. This pacing is very important. I'm gonna put a number down, every question that we have. Some are you gonna read it much faster. Some are you going to need more time, but be okay with just pausing me, pause and unpausing and reading it once before you listen to the analysis. Okay. Read it once always to yourself. And this one right here is a one minute question. All right. So it shouldn't take longer than a minute to analyze. Now, some of the things I do when I analyze a question, I like to always look at uh, what is the grade level? The grade level tells a lot. So I'm going to just circle this and you know what? They mention it twice kindergarten, kindergarten. That's a very important detail. In fact, that term is used more than any other term in this, in this scenario. So when we think of kindergarten, we think about the skills that are going on in kindergarten. The first two that I think about, the first one is phonological awareness involving sound, phonological and phonemic awareness. And the second category that I could associate kindergarten with the first, you know, possibly would be the, the um, uh, concepts of print and things involving the alphabet. So, so those would be my first go-tos for that grade. And then I look for what's actually going on in kindergarten, like are any of the activities going on more of a sound thing or maybe a print thing? And we get rhyming text. We have read alouds. Now, now rhyming text could be early exposure to print. So it could definitely be a, a print awareness thing. I could see that, okay? They're getting exposure to print and, and print carries meaning. But rhyming text, really the rhyming text, just like we were looking at these two books here, rhyming text is really good for developing um, early phonological awareness, right? With rhymes and alliteration. So with rhyming text for kindergarten, I'm leaning more towards sound. 
And for read aloud, well, well, then again, it's it's even more sound. Both of those are sort of leaning more towards sound. That teacher is focused on reading the rhyming texts, which are associated with developing early phonological awareness. So I'd be looking for a sound answer. Does that make sense? Something connected to sound. Let's look at the answers. Well, A gives it away. A is phonological awareness, right? That ability to hear similarities in words and hear sounds in words and know that words are made up of sounds. So I think that's kind of the, the giveaway. If we were, uh, I want to give you another major metaphor to think about, another idea to think about in this class. Uh, and this is going to be in the form of a metaphor, uh, meaning I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, give you an idea to think about uh, that I want you to apply to your test taking a strategy. And it's going to involve your friend. Uh, I want you to think about a friend that you have, a longtime friend that you know, this does not look like my longtime friend, but I'm going to say right now, this is my longtime friend, John. I've known John for a long time. Okay, you have a longtime friend. I'd recognize John anywhere. How many people have a face that looks like a cloud? And imagine you are going to meet your friend at for coffee and 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 you know you're meeting your friend for coffee and uh you you maybe you, you haven't seen them in a couple of years but you know your friend right so you'd be able to tell your friend that you're meeting at i don't know starbucks or dunkin donuts you'd be able to spot them in a crowd of unfamiliar cloud faces right you'd be like that's not my friend that's that's definitely not my friend i don't know why these people are unhappy <laughs> i'll make this person really happy okay so so the idea is this when you go meet your friend for coffee, if you know your friend, you should be able to recognize them right away. And you should be able to cross out the ones that aren't your friend for that particular meetup, right? Does that make sense? So now I want to use this sort of idea, go back to this one right here for this question. If you see rhyming text right away, you should be like, that's my friend, early phonological awareness activity. And so right away, I'm hoping in the first, I don't know, 30 seconds, 15 seconds, let's say maybe in the first 30 seconds, you're like rhyming text, phonological awareness. And it's early phonological awareness. That's why it's fostering. Fostering is beginning, right? So if you were just thinking about that and you were familiar with a, a early fo fostering phonological awareness activity as reading a rhyming text to a child, you get the right answer. Now, another way of getting the right answer is to realize um, who in the cafe is not your friend. Uh, like this frowny town is not my friend or this rectangle face is not, I don't know, is not my friend, right? Or this person is just way too friendly. So we're going to look to see which one of these are not the correct answer. Well, we know it's a, a sound activity. So anything that's not a sound activity, we could cross out. Like look at these ones right here. This one, increasing vocabulary knowledge. This is going to be a later on, this is going to be another friend of ours, but it's going to be connected to reading comp. Reading comprehension has three major parts, vocab questions, uh, best practice questions, and text questions. Anything involving increasing vocabulary would be a reading comprehension vocabulary question. So right now, we're not even in that zone. We could cross it out. And story elements, now this is another reading comprehension category, but it's a text question. Story elements are in, are in literary or narrative text, like beginning, middle, and end. And we're not doing a narrative text. Uh, so we're not doing reading comprehension with narrative text. So we could, we could cross that one off. Look, I've just crossed up these two because they're, they're not, they don't match up with this scenario. They're definitely not things that we'd be focused in on um, in this scenario, right? Now, this one, letter recognition. Now, this is a skill and an activity for preschool, right? You're definitely doing that in preschool and definitely in kindergarten, let, practicing letter recognition, letter naming, let, uh, letters, basic letter sound correspondence with the alphabetical principle. So maybe it, it, it's, in, it's, in, it's, in the, it's fair game in terms of, you know, kindergarten. But you know what? This activity is a sound activity. And letter recognition is definitely a print activity. So we cross that out. Okay, team. So 
in analyzing this question, we think about if we can recognize the scenario, we'll be able to get the answer a lot faster. Or we can cross out those answers that, that don't match up with the scenario and the age group and the clues that are in the question. I think this would definitely be a one minute question, right? Uh, let's just uh, see how we did. Every, every uh, question has one of these. Yeah, this tells us the, the answer. This tells us the test that it came from. Notice that this question, it came from the old Foundations of Reading test from 2014 and the new RECA test from 2021. Now, if you don't know this, uh, Foundations of Reading is taught a lot on the East Coast, but it's actually all over right now. You'd find this in Massachusetts, in North Carolina, in Ohio, in Connecticut, in all these different states using the Foundations of Reading. And the RECA is a Pearson exam in California, which is a very big state. Uh, so, so look at this. We have almost a 10 year or, or eight year, seven, seven or eight year gap here in these exams. There, there are exams that are occurring at different sides of the United States and they're using the same question. So guess what? It's a good question. Don't overlook it. And you, if you are a RECA teacher, you may want to take a, take a look at some of these foundations of reading exams. And if you're taking the foundations of reading exam or a reading specialist exam, you may want to take a look at the RECA exams. That's just a little hint. Okay. All right. Now let's get to this right here. This, this is important. I want to just review this vocab or just put a check mark if we talked about it. And you can do this after every question too. Did we talk about rhyming text? Check. Uh, and rhymes and alliteration? We already did that earlier. We talked about phonological awareness. And oh, story elements is with narrative text. Letter recognition is a print thing. Uh, alphabet knowledge, like letter naming, letter recognition, letter formation. Um, vocabulary knowledge, something we're going to get to, but that's a comprehension thing, right? Okay, good. Look at that. We've kind of quickly reviewed a lot of vocab, and we just did our first question. Now, let's do the next one, okay? All right, let's take a look at that. 